According to American singer Cher, women are the real architects of the society. It's all women today on The Advocate. I will be talking about validation today. Who do we entrust with validating us? Friends or family members? Making a debut is Titi Ibilola, and she's here to educate us on financial literacy. Titi Lope Awe speaks on postnuptial agreements. And finally, Enito wants to clear the air on the differences between entrepreneurship and employment. Sit back. Your panelists are here to discuss the issues in an atmosphere of laughter and seriousness. Stay with us. Validation. Who should validate us? Let's discuss validation. This strange question came to my mind. Who should we entrust with validating us? Should it be ourselves, our spouses, our friends, or our family? Or maybe even random strangers? Validation in this concept is the act of receiving commendation or approval or even praises for who we are or what we have done. Validation is critical to us all as human as it reaffirms our confidence and strengthens us to keep on going. Validation can come in form of people making a call to encourage you or to tell you, bravo, you are good enough. Or when someone says words that put you, you know, in a better place and makes you want to strive for better. Everyone wants to be validated. Everybody needs to be validated. Validation can make you see yourself in a different light. It makes you believe you can do anything. Gives you superpowers or at least a sense of one. Validation gives us the courage to tap into a part of ourselves that we do not know existed. When validated, we feel accepted, respected, wanted and loved. In the pursuit for validation, we must be very wary of whom we give this sensitive responsibility to. This is because the person that has the power to validate you also has the power to tear your self-esteem into shreds at the slightest provocation. Just a short while ago, I put out a poll asking the question, who is responsible for validating us? The response was quite diverse, with some noting that our family is responsible for validating us because they know us very well. Some said friends because they are always with us. They must be able to encourage us and push us further and continue to cheer us on. Others selected the spouse option, noting that after all, we are going to be together forever. So they must encourage one another to succeed. It is their responsibility to validate you at every turn. A few responses selected the self option, i.e. self-validation. They noted that one must be able to look into the mirror and validate oneself. They argued that this will make you less dependent on others and what they think about you. So what is my opinion on this matter? After all, it's an opinion piece. Personally, I believe that all of these people should validate us, at least to an extent. However, I strongly align with self-validation. It is our responsibility to validate ourselves. Indeed, you must be able to look in the mirror and cheer yourself up. Something very similar to what Issa Rae of the TV series Insecure does. My position is premised on the fact that every other person is human and does imperfect. On some days, when they are feeling bad or grey, they can hurt you. They can hurt your self-esteem. This is because they understand and they know your insecurities. So while our family, friends, spouses and random strangers can validate us, we must strive 
for self-validation. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know. I, you know. I'm wondering why I took the deep breath, too. but I, I honestly, uh, I guess the the whole opinion piece kind of threw me back a bit okay. in the sense that I didn't see it coming. Yes, I know, but at the same time, I strongly would say I agree with you about self validation. I align with the principle of self validation. But one thing I have started seeing with principles around self-validation, your own perception, and everything is that we're tending to become slightly self-centered. Mm. And so it's almost like, so if, I, if I've already told myself I'm good enough, if I've told myself that I'm great enough, if I've validated my sense of being and importance, then what you or you actually come to the table to say to me can be put to the back burner. But personally, naturally, my first option would be self-validation because like you rightly said, if somebody else validates you and that's your strongest source of validation, they have the same power to tear you down. And I mean, I can say that from personal experience because for a long time I had a best friend who was like my... That a was cheerleader. Really, yeah. And the person hasn't torn me down per se, but I realized that the dependence on other people's validation was a tad bit too much. I don't know what your experience has been like. I strongly agree with self-validation. Um, I recently just had to tell someone something like, I see her, she has a drive to succeed, but she's always listening to what people have to say. I would, like my sister will call it. Exactly. <laughs> and I had to tell her and I said, you have to think, what do I want? Mm. Where should I be right now? Mm. Then work towards it. Don't concern yourself too much with what others think mm -hmm. because that will slow your own progress down mm -hmm. because they're living their lives. And this is a true life situation. She's a makeup artist. Mm. Someone advised her that, you know, leave this makeup and go into influencing. Mm. And then she decided that, okay, I'll do that. And then she abandoned makeup really? and went into influencing. Six months down the line, that person is still in makeup. Oh she, my goodness. Struggling with influencing. Now she wants to go back to oh my makeup. God. And mm. I said, You see? You see why listening to other people is not going to get you far in life? Yeah. You need to validate yourself mm. and know where you want to be. I don't know. Titi, do you, what's your <laughs> thoughts on this whole self validation or non self validation? I, I, I agree with you. Self validation first. However, have your ears out for loved ones to see whether, whether they can also keep you in check where you feel like you're going out of line. But the most important thing is how you feel about yourself, your self-esteem, you analyze yourself and process yourself first before hearing other people out. So that way, whatever, are, whatever information you are being passed is just coming as an add-on as opposed to changing the whole um, way you feel about yourself. So okay. self-validation, definitely. Well, let, let me let me chip it. Let's look at it from this angle. Okay, so I have two daughters. Mm -hmm. I have this vocacious 12-year-old, self-independent, a leader type, a personality all the way, choleric all the way, okay? Then I have another daughter who is quite melancholy, and you have to push her. And mm -hmm. when I close my eyes to say a prayer, I keep saying, God, help Tishé believe in herself. Mm -hmm. Help Tishé know that Tishé... Because what I now did was I printed so many self-validation uh, words I like, I'm a type of A personality, so oh, yes, I validate myself. I don't need <laughs> nobody. So imagine oh, struggling yes. with oh, my yes. seven-year-old. She'll say, I can't do it. I'm not so, and I'm like, so I just printed like 10 different self-validation quotes. Tisha can, so she does. Tisha believes, Tisha achieves. How do you get children to actually understand that you, they need to imbibe self-validation, particularly when it doesn't come to them naturally? See, I think that, I mean, as a, as a mom, and because I have kind of related with you before now and again, I almost think that with the two personalities, I think we kind of, as parents, as mothers especially, we are kind of meant to guide them, lead them, and let them be the best versions of themselves. True. Sometimes as mothers, we want them to be, we, because especially when you have full force people like us, we want them to be all up there, all everything, <laughs> you know, the energy, let them bring the energy to the room, let them have, like my first, interestingly, in my case, is the opposite. My younger daughter 
is the one that is, oh my goodness, her type A is worse than mine and maybe yours. And sometimes I'm thinking, like, really? She's a first century child. No, so. no, no, no. We had to learn that at some point, like, my baby girl, you're becoming a bully. Like, she's so all out. And her older sister is so, she's, yes, there too, but she's so timid about it and she doesn't want to fail at anything. True, so she yeah? steps back from even going forward and says, I can't do that. And we're like, no, you can't. You, you can't. can't. So, but what I have learned in, to be able to maybe answer this query that you kind of brought up about, you know, people, children who maybe don't exhibit the self-validation that we full force people do exhibit might be to actually just allow them to bloom in their own time while putting the hand behind. Because sometimes we're even a bit too much for them. True, right? We're sometimes also, too strong yeah, for them. I also them. think we, if you affirm them more true she does something small and you celebrate it you encourage her and you make yes. it a big deal she then builds confidence in herself yes on the day to day mm -hmm. no when they were learning how to swim Pamela, of course she's an award-winning swimmer you know and tisha for me went to, we all went to the same swimming school and we said tisha you're six well, I believe that by six, everybody's ready to go. Now start your swimming classes. Well, she did learn to swim in five lessons, but Tisha will never go the full length. She said, Mommy, see, I can swim. And she'll go this way. And I'm like, my money is not vertical. My money is horizontal. <laughs> you know, so I just keep saying to Tisha, Tisha can do it, so she does. Mm. Tisha can do it, so she does. Mm. So truly, not everybody is, um, well, self-independence and self-validate as we are. But at the end of the day, it's important, it's pertinent that you must remember that if you put that responsibility in the hand of somebody else, you have also given them the authority to shred your self-esteem at every given time. Financial literacy. We're all taught how to earn a living. We go to school and get degrees for careers that are expected to equip us with the potential to earn money. We get jobs where we earn millions of naira, but we're not taught how to manage or keep the money that we make. We're not taught budgeting, saving, or financial planning. We're not taught how to invest or attain financial freedom. Only those who study business-related courses are taught this in school. Financial knowledge is so important that it should be taught in primary school to everyone. This omission is the reason why people struggle so hard trying to make money and sometimes end up in debt. Why people with well-paying jobs end up in debt. Why people end up in debt. Why lots of people end up in debt. Money. We're not taught that there's an abundance of money or that money can be made anywhere in the world, that we only need to focus on creating value because money can be exchanged for value. Discipline. Financial discipline is a must for anyone who wants financial freedom. You must discipline your mind to see money as a means to an end and not an end in itself. Financial discipline is a choice that every adult must make if they aim to attain financial freedom. Discipline is why it's easy for one person to save money diligently every month and another person will spend their entire month's salary in two weeks. Discipline is a habit that can be learned. Robin Sharma says, new habits become old habits when you do them every day. Budgeting. A budget is a plan prepared before income is earned. It details exactly where the earnings will go. A budget will help you determine if you will have enough money to spend in a month. A budget helps you to balance your expenses with your earnings. It helps you identify gaps and surpluses so you can adjust your plans when required. If they don't balance and you spend more than you make, you will have a problem that can lead to debt. Budgets are not only useful when you have debts. If utilized properly, a budget can help you put aside a healthy emergency fund for the rainy day. Savings. 
Savings refer to money that is set aside from earnings to be used at a later date. Savings is a deliberate act. It should happen whenever you earn an income. And this does not apply to only salary earners. Setting money aside in a savings account or an emergency fund can be a lifesaver. And the lack of savings can rob you of the ability to make decisions that can improve your life. The reason why most people have issues with saving a portion of their income is that they believe their income is not sufficient for their needs. The truth is that no matter how much you earn, your needs will keep rising to meet your earnings. Financial literacy is needed by everyone. And today you decided to break the table. You, know, <laughs> you smashed it, you broke it. Interesting that we're discussing this. I remember that personally for me, a few years ago, it was a major struggle. Let me pretend I say it was because you know how we speak positive <laughs> these days. But I really truly <laughs> like the idea that this is something that you're talking about. Because I remember that back then, I kept on asking questions that who will teach me how to really make money, keep money, save money, build a lifestyle that I really wanted. And I also, because that quest got me engaging a financial advisor and saying, okay, you know what, what do I do? How do I actually plan? Okay, so this is my monthly income and everything. But there was something you said about how we're not taught. And I remember that my layman's space, I remember I hated accounting as a mm -hmm. course, like a subject in secondary school. Like mm -hmm. I just thought to myself that it was evil. Mm -hmm. That maybe we actually might have been taught in some way, but the presentation of it was as a subject to be passed and not as a way to save our lives. I don't know. But then, I mean, it's sad that as an adult, I have to come back to that same space <laughs> that I really hated and I ran from, considering that my mom was an accountant. <laughs> but I must applaud you, Titi. Why would I do that? Because... I'm an accountant and I belong to several accounting ins um, institutions, but it didn't occur to me to actually come out and start advocating for the financial literacy. On that table, I'm not on that table. I'm an avid saver. I invest. The last time I had an emergency, I realized that I had over 15 different investments and I liquidated it and I was more than you know, buoyant. But I'm an author of children picture story books and I have two books on financial literacy for children because I personally believe that if you want to breed responsible adults. I'm sorry, but my calling is not, <laughs> my calling is not, is not channeled to adults. Mm. I breed younger children. Mm. Everything I know, mm. I pour it into my children. Mm. Everything I know that makes me who I am, I pour it into children around me. Mm. So to that extent, my children are savvy and they understand that saving is critical. Investment is the next level to saving, they understand that you can't just be spend at the spur of the moment. Mm. So for me, I will align with you and I'll say, forget secondary school accounting. At that <laughs> age, you are distracted already. Primary <laughs> school, true. catch them young. Yes. Teach them about money at that yeah, level. I'll break it down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I completely agree. I was just going to say that I have uh, two kids. One is six and one is three. And as little as they are, they have their piggy bank. So every time True. someone gives them any cash, they know that, oh, that money is going straight into their piggy bank. And so on, um, was it yesterday? I needed cash. I didn't have any cash. Mm. I went to the <laughs> mommy, mommy, mommy. We don't want this to And I said to her, I Make said, sure you can pay I, back can I borrow 2,500 naira from you? And she goes, yes, mommy, you're going to pay, but you're going to pay with some more money on it. Mm. Oh, my God. Oh, girl. So nice. it's very important that they understand money from a very young age. True. They know that okay. you don't spend as you receive. They know that you save. They know that... You can even make money from having money. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really important at a very, very young age. That's true. Anyway. And I remember when we got married, one of the things that shocked myself and my husband, that we suddenly realized that we had to pay bills. <laughs> <laughs> and so at a point, That's a rude shock for a lot of people. You, at the point, I had to call my parents and say, ah, daddy, what we ask? How did we now? <laughs> you didn't explain to me that, you know, we're buying gas, we're paying electricity, we're doing this, we're pumping. I'm not going to call this father, daddy, how far now? What's going on you here? <laughs> my head, his father said, bros, you're not the man of your house. You have to go to brace up. So, so I think they left it till too late. Yes, we need to start it now. True. True. We need to start it now. True. We need to start it from the grassroots. They need to understand. I was having a conversation with my son, and he said, Oh, mommy, I can't wait till I go to America and start to earn money. 
And I said, come. I'm make call, your brother. <laughs> call your brother. Call your brother. family meeting. Call your family meeting. <laughs> and I said, money is here. Yes. In Nigeria. Mm. True, There's true, money true. in Togo. There's money all around all us. All around. You just have to find value. Okay. Give people value, you will get money. Awesome. There's no scarcity of money anywhere. Mm. There are billionaires being made here. Every day. And I just mm. felt like, okay, I've left it a little too late. I need to start that right now. True, true. Mm. And I think I was at one of my um, founding courses when I was doing my PhD, Family Wholeness and Wellness. Um, this professor came into class. I went to Bangkok, so it was a Christian school. And he was talking about parenting. And I was like, oh, really? Let, let me listen about parenting. And one thing I took away from that class that I'll never forget, I keep telling parents and mothers, is that the professor said, for you to be a good parent, you must pour yourself into your child. Mm -hmm. That means as you're going, you're going through life, your challenges, you're sharing with your children, your success, you're sharing with your children, mm -hmm. your business, your emotional imbalance, you're sharing with your children. Oh, check my purse. I have 2,000 Naira. What do we want? Oh, we can't buy ice cream today. We have to buy yam in the house. Let us keep 2,000 Naira. Okay, maybe we should just buy the small ice cream, 100, 100 Naira today. Next time we can go to Cold Stone. Now my children will tell me that, Mommy, don't worry. We don't need 2,000 Naira ice cream. Mm -hmm. Just buy fun ice cream. It's 200 Naira. Mm -hmm. we we'll go to the pharmacy and get it. Exactly. You know, so as parents, we must be conscious to ensure that we can actually, you know, carry our children along. We can pour ourselves into them. And of course, well, you have to have that financial habit before you can pour it into the child now. <laughs> because if you don't, if you don't, if you don't do it, they would pick it up still. Mm, so true. be deliberate about it. Oh, true. When, they, when, when, they, when they, everything falls apart and they realize that, oh, they need to manage their finances better, then they will pick it up. Up next is Titi. Stay with us. Postnuptial agreement. Ever wondered how assets are shared between couples in the event of a divorce or separation? where parties have signed postnuptial agreements. After being married for five years, Ada is making very good money from her several tech deals. She decides for the safety of her children that a postnuptial agreement be entered into with her spouse. It's worthy to note that Ada is worth much more than her husband. However, her husband took an offense and stated she was already foreseeing an end to the marriage because she had started earning more money than him. Their parents condemned Ada for suggesting such an agreement, and this has caused a major rift between the couple. Ada is still adamant on the postnuptial agreement. A postnuptial agreement, also referred to as a postmarital agreement, is a legal document designed for couples who are married or in a civil union. Although similar to a prenuptial agreement, postnuptial agreements are entered into after the marriage has commenced. It establishes how the couple's assets will be divided in the event of a divorce or legal separation and the amount, if any, for spousal support that, that one spouse will pay to the other if the marriage ends. What should Ada do? There's something you are hiding. First of all, we have married the marriage already. We are in it, five years inside it. You are now successful in your business. That success, was the man not there? Behind every successful woman... Is a man. No, I now, don't, I don't if agree. you want to safeguard your children, your fear is that your children, very, very simple now. See, but I was just talking about investments. The investments I was liquidating they were not in my name now. As me, if I give birth to a child, I have three, I can't shout. Omo, straight up. Three investments in your name, your account, your account is set up, your life assurance policy in your name is set up, and you're my next of kin. But for you to now come and tell your husband to come and sign paper now, our baby. Why now? If no. it was the man that does it, we will do this. No, no. Equity. No, sorry. I, I, think, I think that ah. while that might be the natural sometimes assumption and maybe why the parents are talking, I think that at this point in time, before we look at blanket situations, the questions that I would personally look at and I would take in this situation would be to actually go be, leave the veil. As in, and I can sense that this conversation is coming from a legal standpoint. I will leave the veil and say to myself, what are the red flags or signals or signs or reasons behind the decision to have this agreement? 
So the mind, let's ask ourselves, it's not, and I do not subscribe to behind every successful man or woman is the other person. The first person that is behind you is yourself and then the universe and your partner, whatever it is. So what I'm going to say here, right here is this, that there is a reason to check what are the spending or financial habits of the other partner. And whether it was a man that came up with it or a woman that came up with it, any party is allowed. There's a freedom of decision. With the fact that we're joined together doesn't mean that I should not be able to make decisions. And we are moving from a society where, I mean, I don't know how to put it without going out of place. But bottom line of what I'm there's trying to say here is that what I'm trying to say no, what I'm trying to say here is that no, what I'm trying to say here is that Ada cannot be entirely said to be unclean for wanting to do that. But what I would then say is that in a situation where there's really no discord or there are no other things, maybe there's a possibility that she needs to look and say, okay, what kind of, I mean, what kind of planning or agreement or plans can we make? Because in the def definition given of a postnuptial agreement, it's in the event of a separation or a divorce. And so that finality around it kind of puts a problem. True. But if there's another type of planning that can be done, and this is where I would now want to agree with HMI in terms of, okay, what kind of investments or decisions or budgeting or planning can be done. But even at that, you still need to have the conversation with the other party. And the person may not even, not every woman is an A-type person and able to just make those decisions as to what to do with their money or how to invest it. And so if for any reason, hands are tied or something. Please, Ada, go on. Have that agreement. See, see, break this tie. <laughs> break the tie. Let's talk about it. Not I, 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 my question and my concern is mm. how legal is this? Is this allowed by law? Very legal. Yes, yes very, very legal. legal. Mm -hmm. That's yes, yes. after the wedding. It's you consented know, by two parties. Agreement. Yes, that's if why the post. husband agreed, mm -hmm. if the husband agrees and it and they both decide to go ahead, then it is very legal. Mm -hmm. It's just like if a prenuptial no. agreement. You have okay. a postnuptial agreement. If so if she no. believes or if she sees reasons that make her decide that, okay, just in case something happens, I want what to be if, sure that what if the these guys do not believe in my money or vice versa. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. What happens when the husband says? Or what no? happens when the husband like the question that she? What happens? Oh yeah, so that's 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 the that's the point where she's at. The okay, so what what will now question. become the solution? Adam, Adam, sorry, not you. <laughs> Titi, oh yeah, put your hand. Let's know where you are. Says no. Ah, if I'm the one, no, I will say no. True. After we are married, then you now wake up and decide that oh now I want a postnuptial agreement. No, that's not your money. So you, why you? you no, 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 no. I'm, part, I'm part of your life. Yeah, I'm part of your work. The fact that you can go and make this money I've made is not, you can't now exclude me from this. No, no so, I think, <laughs> no, you don't I make your success I, behind no, but you know me. What, but you know what, I think also there's a lot of entitlement that comes up in marriages, both but on if the you're side to of me, I'm so men entitled and to women. You. No, I'm, I'm not saying we're not entitled and that's the honest truth. But I think that there's a lot of entitlement that sometimes comes in. What I think is, should go on here is proper communication around these things. Okay, so you know, there needs to be the place of open, honest, hardcore conversations around why are we doing this? What is going on? And the fact people say, if we, especially women, like, this is just another, if you may, I was there when you made your money. First, I'm not disagreeing, but if you were there when I was making my money, I need to ask and itemize, what sacrifices particularly did you make in <laughs> my life? I will have plenty. Let me run yeah, that I will have plenty. I will have plenty. Will have plenty. My plenty. dear, Question is, Even in the question is, what is not, plan I think on I'm giving off of her money? Mm. If he does not plan on living off of her money, there's nothing wrong in her saying, you know what, to secure in case um, this thing doesn't work out at the end, <laughs> I want to know that my money is my money. Not, that's what I'm worried about. Way, it doesn't sound to me as if something is going on correctly in that relationship. You get midway, then you suddenly now jump the bus but, and say, wait, mm. apart from that, she, she's, she's now coming into the money. She's coming into the money. And so she's become a different person. That's why there's this viral meme that says, oh, please check your humility before you become a rich. By the time you are rich, we'll now know who you are in person. And that don't show the real color now. Mm. Now that Ada is rich, she wants to secure the bag. But before she broke even, she was carrying Mr. Husband along. Mm. See, let us, let's be fair. When it comes to equity, it must come with clean hands. Mm. If, if Titi was a man and she came on to the show today, with these points of view, 
You can be rest assured that we will shred him. No, I disagree. I wouldn't. We will I would shred stand that right here. Your wife no, was there. She no. carried your baby. She sacrificed no. her life. No. Made sacrifices I wouldn't in the shred him place. if this was a man. Now, you're not telling no. me five years into the marriage you need a prenup? Guy, check yourself. There must be a reason for something. And I'm serious. There, no, see, I'm not saying that. So you see, if there's a reason, that's why, why, she's, why are you still here? Because you see, no, if she doesn't want to know. No, she's she only she divorce, the court of law no, she doesn't property. want to do a divorce here. But say, if in case of <laughs> a divorce <laughs> or a separation, she's not coming with clean hands. <laughs> she's not coming with clean hands. So if from certainty must come with clean hands. No, but, this, but, hands but, you, but, but do you understand that the agreement is whatever we decide? So that it's not it. set in stone. If Thank we you. say okay, but the man has said he's not agreeing to the agreement. I own. I currently am working with Julian Naira, <laughs> and in, in the event of um, a dissolution of the marriage, I'm going to be willing to give you 30% or 40% of what I'm worth. Do you understand? It doesn't mean I'm not, the, the agreement is not saying, oh, everything goes to me. We're going to sit down at the table mm. and agree that this is the percentage I'm willing to give you a spousal um, support or whatever it is. I mean, it's an agreement. <laughs> Since yeah, I like this table you broke. I thought you okay. broke the table, but this one you broke, you, you've destroyed it. <laughs> Interesting one. Anyways, anytime is next after the break. To work or not to work? Today, I'm going to take a look at employment versus entrepreneurship. And uh, the question I'm asking today is, which of the two can we call a more sustainable tool for economic development? I'm taking a total deviation from all we're talking about, but it's interesting that it, we're still talking finances, but we're now looking at the bigger picture. So what do you do for a living? And like a chorus, you hear, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur seems to be the buzz phrase on everyone's lips. Well, it is no surprise as the rate at which people are starting their own businesses and opening retail outlets has astronomically increased in the recent past. May I at this juncture put a disclaimer? I am no economist. I'm not an accountant like a Jemai. I don't have a financial literacy book like Titi. And I'm not doing agreements and co. I'm just a lawyer who has delved into development and I have a fascination for building human lives. Now let's take a look at the definition of employment. Employment is defined as a state of having paid work, while entrepreneurship is referred to as a creation or extraction of value. In recent times, especially in Nigeria, there have been various discussions around entrepreneurship as a tool for growth and sustainable economic development. And it's interesting that the last time we're here together, Ejimai actually made a very strong case for entrepreneurship as a tool for development. And so it's interesting that we're here again talking about this today. Now, let's actually take a look at this debate on whether entre entrepreneurship or employment is the answer. A 2019 World Bank report states that Nigeria could enable millions of citizens to escape poverty over the next decade through enacting bold reforms designed to boost economic productivity. Without robust productivity growth, the report warns that living standards will continue to deteriorate and the number of people living in poverty will continue to rise, increasing by more than 30 million by 2030. And unless the pace of growth and job creation accelerates, the forecast is gloom, as Nigeria's population is expected to grow by as much as 35 million in the next decade, meaning that Nigeria as a country will account for a quarter of all people living in extreme poverty worldwide. A salient point, however, is that economists are, economists are saying that creating new opportunities for this rapidly increasing labor force will require a new economic model based on productivity growth. In that same report, the report then went ahead to outline four priority areas that could help lay the foundation for Nigeria's transition to a new economic model that makes more effective use of its young population and abundant resources as a way to su support sustainable growth and poverty reduction. 
So it is interesting that Ejimai has written financial literacy books for children and that Titi here has decided to help all of us to come out of poverty by having a book on financial literacy. It could never have come at a more apt time. So the first thing that the report mentioned was to ensure policy transparency and predictability. And this is critical in reducing investment risk for people that are taking investment and promoting growth. Secondly, would be to enhance factor quality in various areas, such as investing in infrastructure, which we know is direly needed in Nigeria today, improving educational outcomes, liberalizing the trade regime, and other factors that would help develop value chains that facilitate the efficient reallocation of factors of production, thereby making Nigeria a more cost-competitive economy. But then, I don't know, with the kind of news that we're hearing today now where BDCs are being regulated, I don't know if that advice may not need to come in again. However, thirdly, the need to regulate, to reduce regulatory discretion in order to help attract foreign and domestic investment and encourage competition. And fourthly, the report says that there's a need to improve access to finance. But in all that has been said in the report, in all that I have gone on about, for Emeka, for Shade, for Aki, I don't know, and even for Ada with her postnuptial agreements, the reality is that we probably all need a blend of the daring, risk-taking entrepreneurs and an integral part of the factors of production, which is labor or employment, as the activity itself is actually called. Because labor is indeed the factor that starts production. And although it is alluded to that no country can grow without having citizens that are daring, if we all become entrepreneurs, then who carries out the work that the entrepreneur is creating? Yes, I know. I simplify the matter. But alas, I am only making a case for a blended view to sustainable economic development and more importantly, for the personal economic plan that we all as Nigerians have to deal with. So once again, my question would be, to work or not to work, for yourself or for somebody? And I say, we all work, whether as entrepreneurs or as employees. Well, unfortunately, in our time, um, you have the possibility or the probability of having less um, employees. Hmm. You know, I've said this thing before, and I will say it again. Why do you have room for less employees? It's obvious. We don't produce anything. Hmm. I was on trade fair on Monday. I decided to break the jinx and go look around and see what all the buzz is. And as I was driving into this massive, one of the biggest markets in West Africa, hmm. world layout and all that, but the striking thing is that they are all selling. Hmm. and not producing. Hmm. What we need to do to create the employee, like Anita mentioned, is to have the back chain of the end product. Hmm. To have people producing what we are selling. It's hmm. not enough to just put the trailers on the high sea and land them and crowd a papa. Yeah, you know, I was wondering how come Lagos is so crowded and why there's always traffic. And you go to countries like America, you go to U United Kingdom, and you go to Dubai, and they are not as crowded as it is. What is going on? Very simple. New York is crowded. Wow. Yes, so, no, 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 no. Yes. Don't, don't get me wrong. They're, 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 of course, London Zone 1 to 4 is crowded. But what the government have done is that they've decentralized the economy. You don't have to come to Lagos for you to make a living. But here, we all have to come to Lagos to buy and sell. We don't even all have to come to Lagos to buy and sell. Before COVID-19, we all had to come to VI oh, to work. To work. Hmm. It didn't make any sense. Everybody. Everybody that's going to work in the morning is Goes driving to VI. from this point and this point to VI. To Why? Work. Every bank's head office has to be in VI. Every company's head office has even to be in VI. Even Deloitte left the mainland to go to the VI. Why? <laughs> No, I don't agree with Deloitte for doing that. No, no. <laughs> the place is crowded. It is crowded. But you see, the question and what I'm saying, and I, I think is this one of the things that pushed this for me was everywhere, every meme, every angle you turn, there's that 
if you're not your, your own boss, you're going to work for somebody for the rest of your life. Oh, oh boss yes, lady, boss, 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 boss you're fine with that. You know? That one but, is just, it's just society just being silly. But there are still young people that don't, don't want to work. Three quarters of the people who say, oh, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to be an entrepreneur, just lazy. True. You know, yeah. Yeah. They can't get up at 6 a.m. to get the job done. Lazy. They can't. Are they I mean, even employable? They're not employable. They're not. They can't. You can't not employable. Come you into can't. my world and see what I see. <laughs> Honestly, when Gary said that lazy Nigerians were all quick to crucify him, mm. Omo, in this my business, like I said, me now, I fall into below both employee and entrepreneur. entrepreneur. This is my entrepreneurship journey. The greatest problem I have are dedicated staff. You see, staff that's that are a willing problem. to get to the job that's before the job starts. God forbid they resume at eight. They will literally fall down and die. <laughs> and that's why I had to ask the question and really look at it and say to ourselves that before the next generation, and sadly, you know, really, really, before they get so lost and so carried away, not realizing that even the process of entrepreneurship itself is not, I just jump into it. There are skills that you require. Yes. There's the abilities you like, need. I say this all the time. I say, if you haven't worked in corporate Nigeria, and then you just want to jump into entrepreneurship, you're going to fail at whatever. At this money, capital, you yes. have to run up and down because you won't even know how to do a report. You won't know how to Thank be you. accountable to anybody. You think that oh, I just wake up and resume. At they never know how to sell the product to people. They don't know. You ask so somebody says, "I'm, oh, I'm, you know, I'm selling something." And I okay, you know what? Tell me about it. And I hear, I have it. I'm thinking, is it difficult for you to actually analyze and itemize what this thing does and sell me on it? Not, I'm not saying marketing, but come across like you actually understand what your business is about. Is zilch. <laughs> and so that was really what Honestly. pushed this this question today for me. We were actually at an event yesterday where we were selling the books, and I was at the event. My staff was there, and they were distributing snacks and party packs and everything. So I saw his party pack there, and of course there was a donut in his hand, and he was chewing the donuts. And there was our market that we were supposed to sell. I just said, guy, put down your donuts. I said, the market <laughs> keep to sell. I don't understand. You understand? <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. I don't, maybe Titi has a different opinion, no? I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a different opinion. However, just back to what Titi said, where she said, um, if you've not worked in corporate world and you decide to start off your own thing, except you obviously get, like, the required skills, you do trainings and things like that, you definitely would have a lot of glitches along the way. I've seen a lot of businesses that even though they, they know what it is they're doing, but the processes are just wrong. And that obviously, at the end of the day, affects the turnout of the business. So obviously, it's very important to have gone through the corporate world and understand how things are done day to day, what is required, the skills that are required to manage a business before you then decide to become an entrepreneur. Well, I think uh, in all in all, really, I, when when... Titi Bilala was talking, there was a part she mentioned about discipline. I think that's the one thing that maybe might be saving grace. But before we go on the issues of food insecurity discussed last week, Kaiwan Webster says the government needs to help their people. We have now come to the end of this week's episode of The Advocates, very sadly. However, The Advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook plus TV Africa. Hashtag the advocate ng or on Instagram at plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate ng. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plus TV Africa.com forward slash advocate ng. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, plus TV Africa. Till next week, it's same time on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. 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 <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.